Okay, thanks for joining the Fat Dad Fishing Channel. My name is Rich, and tonight we're gonna do just a quick breakdown of finding spots um, using the internet, really, so that you can cut down your time on the water and, and be more productive. And I get a lot of questions from uh, subscribers and non-subscribers up and down the East Coast uh, of the US asking for me to help them with very specific locations. Um, so what I thought would be a pretty cool way to do it is instead of going through a lot of editing um, and a lot of a lot of work behind the scenes to come up with a five minute video or a 10 minute video on specific spots, I figured it would be easier and a little bit more interactive if I would just do them live online um, and perhaps do some for some people in chat uh, if, if anyone has any questions. So you can see the exact process that I do. So it's not going to be uh, a nice, neat, edited version of it. It's just gonna be really what I actually do when I take a look at an area that I'm looking to fish. Um, I'm gonna focus mainly for, especially for this first request that I have uh, on flounder um, and, and where I look for it and how I go through the, the process and, and really what is the thought process as I'm going through it. So um, we're gonna jump right in right now. Um, as I go through this, if you have any questions, you feel free to put them in the chat if you're watching the replay later. Um, questions in the comments would be great. And um, I'll, I'll do my best to go through the as many of these as I can. Um, I think I can get to at least two tonight, uh, depending on how long they take and how much detail I go into. So I'm going to dive right in and I'm going to share the screen here. And this right here on the right is the first area that I was asked about. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of details. You may know where this is. You may not know where it is. If you do know where it is, maybe keep it out of the chat, maybe keep it out of the comments and just kind of know, okay, I'm breaking down a spot that you might be looking at. Uh, but I got the question from somebody who is renting boats in this area from a local, uh, a local marina, and they're looking for places to go fishing for flounder. So what I do is I use a site called smartfishingtides.com uh, in order to go through and, and break these down. Now, for full disclosure, this used to be a free site. Uh, it is no longer a free site. It is, it is a site that was developed and is owned by SaltStrong. And you need to be a, a member of their insider club in order to get access to all of these tools that I'm gonna show you as I go through this. However, there's there are other ways that you can get this information. So. As I take a look at this first spot right here, this is just a Google map. And this is this is within smart fishing tides that you pay for through Salt Strong. I am a member. Um, I do recommend people join that, even if you're up north and you're not down in their, their real target zone, which is Florida, Texas, uh, South Carolina, uh, all the way up to Virginia. But, um, but anyway, uh, you start off with Google Maps. So I'm given a, this city. Um, I'm told the general vicinity by this, this one subscriber. And uh, he says, you know, where should I go fishing? So I immediately go into the Google Maps, and this is what I'm looking at. Um, again, this is through the, the Smart Fishing Tides, and it's going to be launching, uh, I believe, up in this area up here. Um, and you take a look at this and, and look for what looks interesting. Now, you have to keep in mind when you're, when you're thinking about flounder, they're ambush predators. They're extremely aggressive. People think they're not but they, because uh, maybe because they look funny and they just sit on the bottom, but they're looking to ambush their prey that goes by. So you're looking for moving water, you're looking for depth changes, you're looking for structure. Um, and, and this map does a really good job of narrowing down some places. Now I haven't actually looked at the next view that we'll do yet, which is the Navionics view, but you can look at just, I mean, this is typical, and I'll give you this much information, South Jersey. Um, it's, it's really wild back uh, behind the, the barrier islands. You have all of these channels. Um, all of these creeks and these sod banks that are going all around here and it's all structure. Even along a sod bank, they fall over and that creates structure uh, under the water and flounder just love that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna be looking up in this area. I see these main channels, which come down here to this inlet. Um, and I'm gonna be looking at that and thinking, okay, this is probably gonna have some depth, but I see some creeks. So on the outgoing tide, when the water is coming out of this, and flowing back towards the inlet. The mouth of this looks like it could be interesting. This is much bigger up here. I really like this. Uh, I really like this area up here. Um, so I'm gonna just start zeroing in on those places. Um, and this is really just the first step. And this, in your mind, you're gonna go through all this. It's gonna take you about two minutes. And you're gonna say, okay, 
I can see the general areas that I want to look at. If I'm launching a boat up here near the top of the screen, I'm going to work my way down toward this inlet down at the bottom of the screen. So then what I do is I go into the Navionics view. Uh, and the Navionics view, I'll bring that right here. Again, this is all within Smart Fishing Tides. Um, you can now go into the Navionics view and, and take a look at it. And here's the same Google view, but now it has an overlay which shows the contours of the bottom of the channels and all the water in there. Now you have these blue areas. That means it's pretty shallow. The green areas means it could be dry at certain times, certain tides. Um, it's not always accurate. So you don't have to go by that. If you're blessed to have a kayak like I do, if you are blessed to have a skiff, a shallow draft boat, uh, or if you're even walking the banks, then check those out. Check out those blue areas. Um, I don't know this particular spot uh, well enough to tell you exactly where it's wrong, but it's wrong a lot. So if you're out there, don't, don't hesitate to do a little bit of exploring and checking around. You may find that this hole up here, which looks like it's only going to, let me zoom in here so we can see it. Let the overlay come back eventually. Um, Yeah, okay. So it's going to take a minute for this to come back here. All right, so you can see the depth here. It's not, it doesn't look like it's very deep. It's maybe four or five feet. I have found places that looked like it was four or five feet and it was actually 15 to 20 feet and it was a perfect place to find flounder. So let's zoom it back out. We'll zoom it as fast this time just so I don't freeze up the computer again for a second. Um, but what you want to do is look for the contours, look for the structure that's on the bottom here. So again, we're launching up in this area. We're going to be coming down this main channel towards the inlet. And when you're reading these maps, it's very simple. Um, you want to look for the lines that are closest together. That's a, that's a more severe drop from one depth to another. So you can see, uh, let's go down here to this section here. You have these feeder creeks coming out and it comes out right here. This is three feet in this section. And you can see these lines are fairly close together and it starts dropping down at this line right here. It's nine feet. So it's going three feet down to around eight or nine feet. Um, so there, that right there would be a fairly decent drop off. Not quite what I would be looking for though. Right here, it looks like you have some sort of a hole. So you're coming up from the side bank, dry land, you have four feet up here and then you have this drop off and it looks like you have a hole or a rise right here. So that would be some decent structure. The maps show you all of these docks. See the little yellow jagged, let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see the docks there, but they, they get covered up by the Navionics. Those are the docks sticking out in this section here. That's beautiful structure for, for flounder. If you are in the mid-Atlantic to northeast uh, like I am, uh, dock fishing isn't as popular as it is down south. In Florida, that's all they do, and they just bang those flounder all day. Uh, and we don't do it up here as much. You see a lot of people just drifting middles of channels, but that structure, and if you have water flowing through here, which you will, this is a main channel that, that connects to the inlet, that's a great spot for a predator fish like a flounder to set up and, and sit uh, behind the pilings, underneath the docks, waiting for the, their prey to come through. So let me zoom out and I'll, I'll go into a real quick breakdown of this. So this section in here looks okay. Um, but I really like this. Now look at all of this structure down here. If I zoom in just a little bit, you have this main channel again coming down in this direction. And then you can see that you have, it's fairly flat here. These lines are separated, but you have 20 feet, you have 12 feet, 14 feet, 17, 22. But look at these lines over here, right at the edges of the channel. Now you can see it's marked over here by these buoys. So you may want to stay away from that. But look over here, you have an outgoing tide. You have the water that's coming from the top left down to the bottom right. That's your current that you want. And it's coming over this flat land here, seven feet right where this cursor is right now, seven feet. So not very deep. Then it's going to hit 11. Then it's going to hit 22. This right here, as the bait is swept out on that outgoing tide, is going to flow right down this ridge and right down into this section here, all along this drop off. And even ahead of this drop off in this 11 feet right up here, that's where you're going to want to look for the flounder. So this right here is a great spot to try. Uh, it depends on boat traffic, obviously, because we're talking about a main channel. If you don't want to be in a main channel, we'll zoom out a little bit and look up here. All right, you have similar structure up here. You have a feeder creek up here. You can see there's some structure in here. It's three feet at the top. 
comes down to five to four to six. You have some lines here, a severe drop off along the side bank. It meets at a point here with this larger channel and it drops down to 13, 12 feet here. So this right here, as the, as the water sweeps around this way, from the top left towards the bottom right on the outgoing, you're gonna to wanna to hit around these lines here and this structure right over where it says Townsend Channel. Um, on the opposite tide, on the incoming, you could come up into here and look at this six foot here, right around the corner. Remember, a point in, in itself, even if you don't have great contours, that's structure. Um, so you can always fish a point. And then this side actually looks really interesting. Uh, over there. So right now we've already found two spots and we've just been doing this for a couple of minutes. You can come back even further. Look at this. Now you got some really nice depth. You got 16 feet here, 17 feet here. I mean, that's really flat. So I wouldn't fish this middle. That's where all the big boats will go. They'll set up there because they can get a real long drift and they don't have to keep moving. If you can get in closer, if you have a trolling motor, a boat that you can handle really well, or a kayak, get in tight and fish these ridges here. And look at this feeder creek water coming out on the outgoing around this corner and you're sitting back in here, you're tossing up there and just, just dragging that bait around the corner, the bucktail, the, the paddle tail, even just live bait um, right around that corner. And it's going to, it's going to just be dropping right into that feeding zone for those flounders. So those are some of the things that I look for. So you can see now we're onto our third spot in this section. Um, and then as you get further down, there's there's just a lot. I mean, look at this right here. This is ridiculous right here. Now it is a main channel, 34 feet in the middle. It comes all the way up to a side bank. So look at how severe that drop off is to give you a little bit of, of scale. You, I mean, look at these houses. Now they're pretty big houses, but you're talking within a block, it's dropping down to 34 feet. Um, so right over here, look at these docks. Look at this natural point here. On an incoming tide, when the water is coming from the bottom to the top, it's going to hit there. It's going to curl around here, and you have this little spot back here at 30 feet with all of this structure and these docks. I would absolutely check that out, uh, fish that, um, tick off some of the Karens that don't want you fishing near their dock. That would be a great place to fish at night uh, because those are most likely in the summer going to be lighted docks. Um, and flounder, man, if you have never fished for flounder at night, do it. Um, you're, you're going to find some really good results um, if you do that. So yet another spot. So I'm not going to keep going through this one. I think this shows, you know, the, the process that I go through um, when I'm, when I'm looking for a place to go that I've never been, that I've never been to. Um, and it does only take a few minutes. Now I've been talking for a little bit, uh, but I did put a little bit of a backstory into how I do this. Um, but you can see it's pretty simple and it's pretty quick. I do want to point out one thing though. And again, let me just zoom out on this. There are a lot of, and this is almost as important or more important. There are a lot of spots in here that I would not fish, right? Um, and that can be just as important, if not more important than finding where I want to fish. And, and you need to be kind of precise. If you have a fish finder, you're in great shape. Look at this section all right in here that I'm circling. Those lines are really far apart. There is very little structure in there. It's like a flat football field or a soccer field. Flounder don't typically hang out there. Now, sometimes they do right now when the water's cooler, they may go up there if it's muddy uh, to warm up on the, on the, the mud flats. Um, but for most of your summer, that's not where they're gonna be. Most of the season, they're not gonna be there. They're gonna be over in the structure and the deeper areas. Um, so you would want to avoid that. So sometimes it's just as important important to point out to yourself the places you do not want to go. Any drifts in there are going to be wasted. You could still catch some flounder, but you can be sure that there's 25, 27 inch flounder. The big ones uh, are not sitting up there because the bait fish aren't coming through there. They're being swept through the channel. They're being swept over the structure. So they're going to find the prime spot. They're going to bully all the little flounder out of the way, and they're going to set up for that quick, easy meal. And that's how they get big, fat doormats that feed your entire family. Um, another little area right here. Look at this section down here. This is the deep channel. There's very little structure straight down the middle here. I would not fish the middle of this channel. Most boats will. Um, again, it's an easy drift. Don't do it. Fish either this edge here or this, this would be the better edge because you have all of these docks that you can see in yellow. Um, so you have all that structure there if you can keep yourself from getting hung up and if you're tossing under there if you're just bouncing bottom maybe the docks aren't going to be that advantageous for you 
Uh, but if you're throwing, if you're throwing a bucktail and you're retrieving it, or if you're throwing a paddle tail, a jig head or something like that, you'd want to check that out. So, uh, that right there shows that section. Um, I'm going to jump over to one that one other request that I have for Virginia. Uh, before I hit that, uh, William Cattleson, your comment, any tips for surf fishing for flounder? Yeah. So let me, let me just tell you, I, I can help you with that. Um, I will tell you that to me, uh, surf fishing for flounder is it's an art. Uh, and it all comes down to how to read a beach uh, and learning how to read a beach correctly. Again, go back to what I said at the beginning. Flounder are very aggressive ambush feeders. They're, they're ambush predators. They are out there looking to attack things that come through. And, you know, no, no matter how good their camouflage is, they use structure in order to uh, be their best at, at camouflaging themselves. So they have the quick strike. They don't have to go chasing uh, fish down. If you've ever seen a flounder, they'll chase fish, but they're not extremely fast. It's not like they're a Spanish mackerel out there uh, chasing something down or a bluefish uh, working with a school to, to chase down a predator. So you have to find the structure. So you have to look for the runouts. You need to look for the sloughs. You need to see where you can cast over a sandbar or, or fish the structure on the inside of a sandbar. Um, but what you will find, and I'll give this tip right now, maybe I, I can do a video on uh, a full video on surf fishing for flounder because it really is a a big um, a big topic uh, probably more than I can do tonight. But the the quick tip that I will give is don't ignore the shore break and the shore break is where those waves are breaking right up against the beach. That wash in there it's usually a, a little trough and then it comes right up onto the shore. That deeper area is really good structure. It pushes all the small bait up there and the flounder will just sit in that wash and you can literally catch them five feet from you. Now, I wouldn't just fish five feet from myself. I'd fish the other structure, but I would work that bait all the way back in until it's right at my feet and then I'd pull it out. And, and you will be surprised uh, at the numbers and the size of flounder that you can catch right up in that wash. Um, so that's the that's a quick tip I can give tonight. I'll, I'll do something... Uh, down the road that's a little bit more in depth um, on surf fishing for flounder. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, and by the way, everyone, as I go into this next question, um, really would appreciate it if you find, don't do this unless you find value. If you find some value in this um, and you're not subscribed, hitting a subscribe, liking the video really does help me uh, with growing the channel. Um, and sharing it with friends that you think that might benefit from, from getting a little bit of this information. All of that would be greatly appreciated. Um, so please don't, don't hesitate to do any of that. And with that, I'll jump into Victor Ramos. Should I also consider depths? Avoid any areas less than 10 feet. So you would think, you would think based on what a lot of people say, maybe even some of the things that I said uh, earlier, that 10 feet of water is, you know, if you're less than 10 feet, it's probably not good for flounder. Flounder, you can find them up to inches of water um, and they will be actively feeding in inches of water. Uh, it all depends on the types of conditions. And, and, and here's something to, to point out. If you've never seen flounder gigging, look it up uh, and, and take a look at some of the people that are doing it. They are literally taking these flats boats, these, these skiffs, with lights on the front at night into the shallows. And we're talking, you know, a foot of water, sometimes less. And they're just, they're just spearing the flounder that are sitting up in that shallow, in that shallow water. I can tell you um, two weeks ago when I was out fishing, I was, uh, I was catching flounder in six feet of water. Consistently, I was getting not a touch in anything that was over 10. I, I mean, literally got nothing over 10. All right, that was three weeks ago. Um, so it, it all depends, but, but again, they're looking for structure, they're looking for water flow, and, and basically if you can think like the bait that's in the area, where is it right now, that's where the flounder are. Um, they're gonna be around bridges. Uh, they're gonna be in the shallows, they're gonna be in the, the, the deep channels, they're gonna be on this hard structure like rocks, they're gonna be on the softer structure like fallen sod banks that collapsed into the channels. Um, so I wouldn't limit myself on depths. The only time that I limit myself or try to restrict the depths that I'm fishing for flounder is based on water temperatures, right? So 
if it's really hot, like I'll be fishing a lot in New Jersey this year. For those that don't know, I, I fish mainly New Jersey, uh, up into New York and Delaware uh, as well. And then I make what I would consider special trips to other areas like Virginia and North Carolina. I go every year, uh, South Carolina and Florida. Um, but in the summer in New Jersey, it, I mean, you can have 100 degree weather and you can have 80 degree water temperatures. You're not fishing the flats in 80 degree water temperatures. You're fishing the deeper channels that are looking for a little bit cooler water um, where they're more comfortable. So that's when I started thinking about depths and, and it's only as a, a reaction to temperatures. Right now in the spring, um, I was talking to a buddy of mine uh, yesterday. It's been tough. Uh, it's been tough in the backwaters, dirty water, but also we have these wild fluctuations in temperatures. On the outgoing tide, the water temperature is 67 degrees where I was this past weekend. On the incoming, the incoming water directly in the inlet when I went through to check it was 57. So you have a 10 degree swing right there. So as that incoming tide is coming in, those flounder are gonna be pushing up into the warmer flats, which is the less than five feet, um, typically three, two feet maybe. Um, but on the outgoing, they, they could be anywhere uh, because they're really comfortable in, in those upper 60s. I really like it once it hits 70, uh, 69, 70, 71 degrees. That's where I, I really think it turns on. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only considerations I have with depth. Um, I would not rule something out because it's 60 feet deep and I would not rule something out because it's three feet deep unless there's another situation that tells me this is why they're not going to be there. So hopefully, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that, uh, that answers that question for you. Um, let me jump in real quick to this next one that I have and I can actually show you exactly where this one is. Let me see here. I'll show you exactly how I go through smart fishing tides to find it. Um, so this is what the site looks like. It's going to load uh, this map and you can see I'm in Pennsylvania right now. So it brings up local tide stations. So this is the Delaware river. So this is freshwater, uh, but these are all the tide stations, these little, these little heads here. Um, and I'm just going to kind of bring it down here. You can see all the ones on the coast of New Jersey, all the way up through the Delaware Bay. Um, and I'll keep coming down all the way through Maryland, down to Assateague. And here we are. I had a request for this area for somebody that is going on vacation to Chincoteague uh, in Virginia this year. Um, so we'll start there. So when you, if, you, if you do go to Smart Fishing Tides, if you do join Salt Strong, uh, there's actually a link in the description of this video if you'd like to. Um, if, you, if you'd like to join it, um, I'll just say real quick, I am a member, I am a paying member. Um, uh, I've been for a few years now, I think it's two and a half years. Uh, there's a lot of valuable information. It is heavily focused for full disclosure on Florida fishing, Texas fishing, Gulf fishing. So it's gonna have a lot of snook, redfish and trout. Those are their three main. Uh, species. They do touch on flounder and a whole bunch of other things, grouper, gag grouper, sharks, you know, like bonnetheads and, and so on and so forth, a little bit of offshore. Um, but it's it's a very, very good club to join. Uh, Joe Simons, I've talked to him many times. Uh, he's one of the, the co-founders with his brother, Luke. Outstanding, uh, outstanding place to go. And the, here's the big thing. You can believe me or not, but they actually offer a 365 day money back guarantee so it's a subscription, you pay monthly, but at the end of one year, they tell you if you have not caught more fish because they have helped you, uh, let them know, you can cancel your membership and they will give you all of your money back and they do. Um, now, nobody that I know uh, has ever left, um, but they had the option to if, if they want to and they just stick around, it's a great community. So uh, if you do wanna head over there, please use the link down below so that they know that I sent you over there. Um, you don't have to, but uh, I think it's good. And if you do, make sure you join the community, which is like a Facebook group of just, just cool fishermen that only help each other. Make sure you look me up. My name is Rich Natoli. I'm in there quite often. Um, just say hi so that we can connect there. So anyway, so let's jump into this. So now I'm down in this area around Chincoteague. I'm going to pick one of these tide stations where I'm going to fish. I'm just going to pick this one. It's just a random one, Harbor of Refuge. And I'm going to click in there. And it brings me up this page. Now I have a strike score calendar, and this is basically saying out of 10, 
based on the salooner activity and the weather forecast in the next 14 days. This is a 7.5 today. It's a 5.8 tomorrow, the waxing crescent, so on and so forth. So let's say I'm going to go fishing on Saturday. I personally, I go one, you know, I usually get one day a week. I'm going that day no matter what. So I pick Saturday, everything below this updates. Here's your weather. Here's the speed of the wind that day. So, wow, <laughs> 15 mile an hour Southwest wind, but 80 degrees. Um, so that's what I'd have to deal with. Here's the tide chart. So you can see the, the tide, you can see where it's coming in and going out the fastest, the, the more severe the slope, the faster the, the water flow. So 9 a.m. is going to be low tide, very rapid, uh, steep rise to high tide, uh, which is going to be at 4 p.m. So this is going to be where the water is moving the most. And then I could come down here. This is where the feeding should happen the best, the greener areas uh, for the fish. You can look at local radar if you're worried about storms. I actually have this up because I'm a kayak fisherman. Um, so I usually have this up in the summer just so I can see when they're coming in. It does come in very handy. And now we'll just look at that satellite map like, like we were looking at before um, in the top view there. And here's, here's the tide station. So where am I going to look? Well, the ocean's out here. So here's your inlet that comes in behind this place called Tom's Cove. Um, you've got some channels here. Those look interesting. Now it looks kind of shallow. Now you can't always tell in a satellite view, but it's something to consider. I kind of like the idea of this coming around this point here, if I'm going to stay out there, but I really like these areas back here, like Squirrel Creek. That looks pretty decent. It's got a little feeder creek there. You got this structure up in this area that could be interesting uh, especially along this back side you have this channel that seems to be coming through the mainland yeah and you've got these you got the bridge here the bridge is outstanding structure if you don't fish bridges you're crazy um, can be you know a little iffy depending on what boat you're in and how busy it is um, if you're in a kayak be very careful people don't don't always respect the uh no wake zones there um but you know, you have structure right there. So I, I look in this area here. I don't know what it looks like on Navionics yet. Uh, anywhere around this bridge, really. Uh, this little island looks interesting to me because it's right at the base of a creek here. And this creek looks pretty substantial. It goes all the way through this, this whole landmass here. So I like this as well. So let me jump over and take a look at the Navionics view, which again is the contours. It's a sonar map here. The contours on the bottom of the water column. And let's see what that looks like. Um, okay. I'm going to try to do this without freezing everything up. All right. So here's that creek right here. All right. So it looks actually kind of shallow and really flat, right? So it goes from two to five feet in the middle. I, I'll cross this off the list for, for going up the middle of that. However, look at this. Tell me that's not awesome right here. Look at all of that structure right here. I'll even zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, look at that. So you have this landmass here. So you have this natural structure here on the right-hand side. So that's zero depth right there. You can see it's land. That's dropping down to 24 feet in, in no time. So that is a severe drop-off. You have structure even down the middle of this. And then you have this rise, a pretty nice rise from 25 to 20 to 16 to 12 up to 18 feet here, 13 feet up here. So actually this section down in here looks really nice. If if you're down in this area in Chincoteague, I would hit both this side and this side and I would really fish right here. And I'd really fish right here for, a, for the, the big reason that you have great structure all in this section, but you have the water that's coming out of this creek, right? So on the outgoing tide that's coming down through here and yes, it's spilling through the shallow blue area over here, but it's coming down this deep channel. You know predator fish are going to sit right in this section here. So that is a great spot to look. You can see, look at this. It's, it's like black lines if you're zoomed out. We got your docks here. You got some decent structure here. You got a little hole here. This isn't as good as the other side, but look at this. You're, I mean, five feet right here to 20. That's a, that's a nice drop off there. It's a main channel, but it's a nice drop off. It could be worth checking out. And let's come up here. So here's that landmass that's between the island and the mainland. Looks okay over here. Three feet to 19 feet. That's a pretty, pretty quick drop. Look at this. This is cool. 
here you got your land four feet right here here you have actually a creek coming out around at two feet that drops into 14 and 15 feet comes down this this flat here i wouldn't fish this flat but then you you still this is still kind of like that working off the back end of that point now you got 12 13 down to 25 feet here so this is an interesting spot right here look at this little buckle here i don't know what it's really called i call them buckles um, where, where the the lines the circles just kind of buckle one direction um, so you have this little section right here you can be sure on the outgoing that things are getting swept over the top of this and down into this deep area i mean it's three feet right here down to 16. something's coming off that edge and somebody's waiting at the bottom or again ambush predators they'll they'll sit ahead of the structure too you could have flounder sitting up at the top here so i actually would fish all of these i start i would even start in this this flat football field here right around the 12 and come all the way down the bottom and all the way back up the other end and then kind of end up in this football field and then just come right back up to the top you know above the 12 and, and drift it again maybe a little closer a little further out from the side bank and then i try this buckle over here and see what i could get now the bridge this looks terrible actually <laughs> two feet wow two feet of water here um so this side doesn't look great. You do have this structure of a bridge dropping down to this section right here, which is the 12 feet, 11 feet. So I would try this. I wouldn't venture into this into these flats unless it was cold and they were looking to sun themselves and it was mud. I think it's probably sand though. But if I were on this other side here, now this is some interesting structure for a bridge. Um, yeah, look, you got the drop-offs, which are normal around bridges. You got some ridges here. Again, you got a big football field I wouldn't really touch, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd look at this bridge too. So again, so Chincoteague, if you're heading there, um, not so worried about burning this spot because I really don't know anybody that's a subscriber that lives in Chincoteague. If, you, if I'm burning a spot, I apologize. Um, I tried to pick something that was further away uh, and this guy was heading down there this summer and, and just asked for some ideas. So, so there you go. Um, so yeah, so that, that's how I do that there. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, two quick, well, probably three quick spots in there. You can see, look at this right here, right at the marina. You may have some, if you're fishing from shore, I don't know if this is public. No, it's not public. Yeah. Well, if you can get in there, rent one of these houses, right? Look at this. I mean, you got this nice, nice curve right through here, get in a little rowboat and you can fish out right down this and right into this 27 foot hole. So there's some spots, but again, like I said last time, where would you not fish here? I would not fish anywhere in here, in this flat area here, where it's 19, 18, 21, 19, 20, 23. This is so flat. That's boring. Nobody likes nobody likes flat. Flounder don't sit in flats um, out in the middle of deep stuff. The only time they sit in flats is when it's really shallow and they're trying to warm themselves up, um, at least in my experience. Any, anything I say, somebody can probably give a direct example of, of where it was incorrect or where they have an example where it was incorrect. I'm speaking generally of the, the way that I do it. Um, so I would stay away from that, that stuff there uh, and really look at these edges for the, the structure there. Even this right here is not a big drop. It looks like it's a nice hole down to 31 feet, but it's only a four foot drop from all the way up here down to here. So I'd much rather spend my time over here where it goes three feet to 16 feet and really fish that area there. Um, you know, and again, anything with a creek, anything with rocks. I mean, if you see rocks on the side here when you're out there, stop and fish around those rocks. Um, you know, go back to that surf fishing question. Uh, jetties are awesome if you want to catch flounder. Um, fishing from a jetty and close to the jetty. Don't go hauling it out into no structure. You know, walk up the jetty, cast out towards the front of the jetty and bring it back as close to the jetty as you can. You risk some snags, but you also can catch some fish there, fishing from the beach. Um, you know, so to, you just want to, it's all about maximizing your, your opportunity, right? So, so that's what I would suggest. All right, so I think that covers that one. So um, let me hit see some other comments. Um, not sure if anyone has a spot they want me to, to check out. If not, I'll just answer some of these questions. Um, Will, thank you. Uh, Another great video, Rich. His fluke fishing has improved drastically. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this whole channel is, I'm not making any money. It's not a monetized channel or anything like that. Uh, maybe someday it will. Um, I just have 1,100 subscribers, which I actually could monetize it, but it's not right now. 
Um, I, I really like the idea of helping other people catch fish. My whole story is that I don't get a lot of time to go fishing anymore. When I was younger, when I was in college, I lived at the shore the summers. I grew up blessed to have a grandfather with boats. Uh, so I spent a lot of time offshore and he was a doctor and he had a card that he would give me for gas back when there were gas cards and I could take the boat out whenever I wanted to. Tuna fishing, flounder fishing, blue fishing was the big thing. Um, but now I have a family. I live in Pennsylvania and I love my family and I like to spend time with them. So I want to maximize every minute I have on the water. And I know how much it sucks to drive, you know, like me, two hours, two and a half hours to go fishing and not catch anything. So I just figure the more people I can help, the more people catch more fish, the, the better it is for everybody uh, out on the water. So uh, salt strong is worth the money. Yes, it is. Um, uh, sheep's head fishing. Yeah. So sheep's head, I'll tell you this right now. Um, was it Artie Vander 23? Um, sheep's head fishing. I actually went this past weekend trying to see if I could get some. I didn't get any sheep's head. I, I got, and I'm actually going to put the video up uh, in a couple days or maybe tomorrow. Uh, I got a, I went for a multi species day, didn't get any sheep. Um, ended up with a tog, a ray, the biggest ray I've ever seen. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was a little intimidating to have it next to the kayak. Um, it was about five and a half, six feet across. Uh, and I caught it on a flounder rod. So uh, I ended up cutting that line because I was a little nervous about that, uh, about that tail coming at me, coming at me as I leaned over the boat. But um, yeah, sheep's head, I'm definitely going to be doing some sheep's head videos this, this summer. Um, I'm actually considering trying again for sheep's head this, uh, this weekend. Um, so if I can get into some, maybe I'll put up a video next week with some, some sheep's head, but I'll, I'll get that in there. They're definitely becoming a go-to fish, uh, in, in the South Jersey area. Um, you know, it should be up in New York as well. I mean, it should be going all the way up past New York. Um, it, it, it's not out of their range and, and I'd love to see that fishery pick up. Um, Will asks, would you fish a bridge well inside the bay? Um, because it's so far from the inlet, I wonder if it's a good spot. So here's here's the thing. So for flounder, I try to stay fairly close uh, to the to the inlets, but there are a lot of areas where you just can't. I mean, it, it's they they really like high salinity water, um, so I try to stick there. But I would fish a bridge that's well inside a bay. Um, they will hang to that structure. They will find that structure. Um, so yes, I absolutely would. Um, I wouldn't hesitate to try it out. You know, if, as long as you're within a few miles and I'm talking like three miles, um, I don't typically fish any further than that from inlets. Um, but I would also say that I don't fish further than that, but that's not on purpose. It just isn't the way it works out. So, um, I, I can't give you the best answer on that. I would try it though. I think anything is worth fishing, uh, to give it a try if there's a bridge there. Rye Beach, New York. Let's see. Let me see if I could take a look at that. I don't even know where Rye Beach is. Let's see. All right, so let's go back. I'll still use this. Um, just as a heads up, you can also use Navionics um, instead of Smart Fishing Tides. It does take a subscription for that, um, but you could also use that. Uh, instead of uh, Rye Beach, New Hampshire. Is that right? Is that right, Victor? Well, we'll use that anyway. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Where is that? It looks like right here, I'm guessing. All right. Well, this looks like this is probably the general area here. Uh, Jaffrey Point, Port Point. All right. So let's let's just use this as one more quick example. Uh, we'll use this one right here, Jaffrey Point. All right. So I'm not going to spend time on the strike calendar. Oh, look at that. And nine. Hmm. I want to fish that day, the 22nd, um, if you can, if the weather's good. The long range says it's going to be a little rainy in the afternoon, a little bit of wind. But anyway, uh, look at those feeding projections. It's an active day. If you believe in salooner uh, activity, I do. 
Um, so I, I would definitely fish that. All right, so let me come in on this section here. Oh, wait, no, this is rye down here. I'll just manually move it. So we're talking off the beach. Ooh, that's a tough one. All right, so here's here's a challenge when using um, smart fishing tides. All right, so the Google Maps, beaches shift every day, right? So I'm gonna assume that this section right here is what you're talking about. Um, you might actually wanna look up here where it's not just this sandy beach. So this looks interesting. You see a little bit under the water. Let's check out the Navionics. Again, Navionics can change real quick. So you're gonna have to learn how to read the beach um, to see where these, these cuts and these runoffs and these troughs and, and everything are. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. Pull off some of these labels to make it a little cleaner. Yeah, I mean, if you have a boat, you're down here at Rye Beach. I mean, look at all these docks. That's structure, but it's really flat underneath. Uh, it's kind of iffy. You got a little bit here at this, this bridge. It looks like a small bridge coming into these back channels. Uh, a little bit of structure. Nothing is amazing. Um, but this is interesting right here. Look at that. So it's, it's kind of flat at five feet, but then you got this hole here that goes to, what is that? It looks like 12 feet. So you get a five to 12 foot drop there, right along uh, this severe drop here from where it can get dry, it looks like uh, in certain situations. This section right here at Northward Channel looks interesting uh, to, to try out. I don't know how far back we're gonna get. Yeah, look at us up here. God, if you're not fishing this, I don't know what to tell you. That's 67 feet, that's, that's some real summer fishing there, but look at this. I mean, you got these drop-offs here. You got the docks here. Yeah, I'd be looking at this. Look at where it's darker when you're, you're, you're scrolled out a little bit. Those are very interesting points. You got Goat Island here where it's 9 feet. Look at these docks are 9 to 11 feet, and it drops to 42. These are some severe drop-offs that I would be looking at. And it depends on the tides and which way the water's flowing. Look at this here, this big buckle where it comes all down here. It's like this little pocket. Sitting in this pocket in the right tides and the right winds, uh, you know, if it's pushing the bait through there, that's going to be a beautiful spot. This this corner right here at this point, this is a point. It won't look like a point um, because it, it, there's probably water over it. So it's not like there's a landmass sticking out there. But this is actually a point. This is this comes up to just a few inches of water, maybe a foot of water, and it drops down to 25. So it's going two feet, curls around here. That's a point. I would fish this on the, uh, as the tide is going from bottom to top. You got the structure of the bridge up here, you know, the deep water here, but I'd fish this right here and come right back into this section here. I would stay out of this right here. 25 to 31 isn't bad, but it's nothing compared to over here. If you're a big flounder, you can choose between this structure over here to stake your claim. We're sitting in this flatter 31 to 25 foot. You're going to leave this for the little guys, and you're going to sit over here, and you're going to pick off the big bait by yourself. So I would, I would look at those areas there. So yeah, so there's some good spots there. Um, I would check those out. Um, North Wildwood. So Mark, I actually have several um, several videos right now with North Wildwood. Um, if you would like to send me an email at rich at fatdadfishing.com, I'll, I'll point out to you the exact ones uh, that, are, that are North Wildwood. Um, and once you see them, you'll, you'll, absolutely know exactly where um where where to go or where i've been uh, in that area um so I, i'd be happy to do that i'm not going to do it right now um probably running out of time here um unless there are some other questions um and, and actually mark I, I fish down there a lot if if uh i don't know if you're a kayak fisherman but i'd be happy to meet you on the water sometime we can paddle around together and uh and, and talk about some spots as well. Um, I'm always down for that. John Davis, great to see you, man. John, John's a guy, he, he's also salt strong. Um, we, I met him out on Raritan Bay, um, good guy. Uh, so yeah, so, uh, okay, and the last question, it looks like, how are you liking the power handle on the Quantum Acuras? I love that power handle. Um, Man, I, I got to tell you, saltwater fishermen never use a bait caster. I use the big pen internationals for tuna and everything. You got that big crank. 
And then I get this Acuras, and I'm thinking, all right, I'll try it for flounder. And, and you know, you're doing these little motions. I hated it. Absolutely hated it. Did it once, got the advice. It might have been from you to pick up the uh, the power handle. I got a Gamexis power handle and put it on there for TOG, and now I love it. Um, I'm going to be using a baitcaster a lot this summer. Actually, I'm working with uh, a guy named John Creeley, who uh, Creeley Custom Rods. He and I are working together to come up with some rods uh, for kayak fishing for flounder. And uh, he's he's actually finishing up this week the first prototype of that rod. Um, and I'm hoping to get it out there this weekend. Um, and it, it is a it is going to have a bait caster. It's going to have that accuracy on there. So I'm going to give that a go uh, this summer. So if there are any other questions, happy to jump in and, and answer any of them. But I, I personally, I'm always going to put a power handle on on those reels because I'm just not, maybe I don't have the dexterity uh, for these small freshwater size bait caster. I just feel like I'm cranking way too fast, way, and it's just unnecessary. I'd rather just do a big swing on that reel. All right. So, um, guys, thank you all for checking this video out. Again, um, would really appreciate it if you could like, subscribe, comment. Um, Comment on the video itself after it comes out. Um, and, and, and really importantly for me, uh, if you could share this with anybody that you think would benefit from any of the information that I'm giving. Um, again, uh, I, I'd like to do more live streams. This is really the stuff that's cool to me. It's really stressful to have to go out and catch fish so that I can post something that people want to watch. Um, and, you know, like this past week, I caught a lot of fish, but I don't know how entertaining it is. I don't know how entertaining I am on the water, but I do know that. Um, I do know some things that could help some people. So I'd like to do more live streams. We're at about 45 minutes right now um, on my community tab within this channel. Please feel free to comment uh, anytime. Maybe I'll put a poll up there uh, just or just ask the question, what, what day of the week and what times work best for you? If you're interested in more videos like this, I'm happy to do them. I really love doing them. I'll do them as long as I, I'm having fun and, and I think it's helping people. Um, but yeah, just communicate with me, send me an email, rich at fatdadfishing.com, and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Just keep in mind, I'm not a full-time fisherman. I do have a, a full-time job. Um, I work over 40 hours a week. So um, don't, don't get mad at me if I don't get back to you right away. I will get back to you. And if I don't, send me another email or send me another message saying, dude, you didn't answer. Um, and I will absolutely apologize for it, and I'll get back to you and, and see, see what I can do to help you out. So. Again, thanks for checking this out. And uh, hey, this weekend, I wish nothing but the tightest lines to all of you. Get out there, catch them up, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.